Hi, my name is Andrew Goodwin and I am a music composer for video games, film, and TV. I record lots of live instruments, which takes two hands for the most part. Reaching over to press record on the space bar or whatever key you have it on. I think actually mine's F12. I lied. Whether it's next to you or you've got it far away, it just makes things difficult. You lose the position you have with your instrument, your breathing, you move around from the mic and it changes the sound from the last take you did. So this will allow you to just press record, stop and start with the foot switch and do amazing recordings a lot faster. This is the MIDI foot switch that I bought. It's a cheap one, it's like 20 bucks. It's by Nectar. You could really use any MIDI foot switch and all I did was plug it into my MIDI keyboard. That allows me to trigger the command within side Cubase. Side note, I think that this could probably work in Reaper or Logic different programs as long as when you set up a punch in punch out range, when you press play, that will allow you to stop and start recording. That's kind of the catch with this whole thing. Okay, so all of this is done inside of Cubase. You don't need any extra programs. In basic, we're gonna create a project logical editor command and trigger that with a mini foot switch and also combine that with using punch in punch out points to start and stop recording. It sounds a little crazy, but I promise you it is so much easier to record live instruments, flutes, guitars, cello, whatever you have, because you don't lose the position, your structure with your instrument, you don't lose a position next to your mic. This is so much nicer to maintain consistency and speed up your recording process. So I'm going to first just quickly show it actually working. If I want to begin recording at 33 right here, I will press my key command first, which sets up the recording. And now I will press the MIDI foot switch. And so move the playhead back four bars to give me space. And now we'll actually begin recording once it hits the red zone at the top here. And you see it's recording. And then I'll press the foot switch again. And it stops the recording. And then if I zoom in, because I, I made these small on purpose, but if I zoom in, you'll see there's a fade in and fade out already on the track, which is really, really helpful. If I wanted to record on a different track, I could just select the track with a mouse, press the foot switch again, and it will begin recording from the same position on that next track. Say if you're doubling instruments, very common thing. Press it again, it stops and adds the fades. Cool. So what if, what if I wanted to start recording back here at bar 24? Well, I, I just place my cursor and then press the setup command again, which sets up the recording. And now it's set up to begin recording at bar 24. We got recording right there. So that's how you can quickly move around with this setup. All right, so how do we set this up? First, you will create a macro within Cubase. So we'll go to edit, key commands, and then at the bottom here, you would click new to create a new macro. I've already got it created, of course. And I will show you what that is. It's right here. You would find these commands in these folders up here and then click add to add them to the list in this order. Some of these commands are optional. You in basic just need the set punch in to project cursor position command. That will tell it when to begin recording. So if you want to record at bar 24, you've got to set that at bar 24. If you want to go start recording at bar 40, you've got to set that at bar 40. That has to be done each time before you use the foot switch. But like I said, typically you're recording on a section of a song, you're recording different instruments or multiple takes of one instrument. And so once you set that up once, you're done for quite a while. The nudge bar is just moving the cursor. Once you place it, it moves it back four bars. I find it really helpful to give me plenty of time to sit into the beat or the rhythm and just prepare to actually play, take a deep breath, whatever it is. At the bottom, I've got show track lanes on. This is setting up lane recording in Cubase. If you don't use that and you don't know what that is, that's fine. You, you can just take this command out and use the regular recording one take per track. That's not a problem. So after you've created this macro, you need to assign it a key command within Cubase. Of course, this can be linked to Metagrid or some other type of triggering thing like maybe Stream Deck. I've got mono Metagrid, so it's really easy to set up each time I want to record. Okay, next you will need to create a project logical editor command. Really, there is no 
logical editor command up here. It's just these commands down here. I found that in Cubase 12, for whatever reason, if you create a macro within here, it actually splits the time that it takes on these two sides. So there's a bit of a delay, which is really helpful in making some of these macros work. So copy these and then name it stop recording and add fades and that will get you set up things to note here so this is activating the punch in and punch out points it's starting the playhead like spacebar is typically what this is assigned to in cubase it's starting and once the playhead hits the range of punch in and punch out it will actually begin recording so that's how that works on this other side, you'll see fade in, fade out. So the first time we run through this, we press it to begin recording It activates the points, toggles them on essentially, starts the recording, and then it tries to apply to fade in, fade out, but there's no part there, so it doesn't do anything. The next time you press the same foot switch again, it triggers the same command, but this time it toggles off the punch in, punch out points, and it stops the recording with this command, because it's a toggle, unlike record, and then on this side, now that there's a part and it's already selected because you just stopped recording, it will add a fade in fade out automatically. At the bottom here, I've got transform. Honestly, it may not matter what is down here because there's no command listed up here. That's the PLE that you will need to create that we're gonna link the foot switch to. Okay, so now we will set up the MIDI foot switch in Cubase. Cubase 12 has a brand new feature called MIDI remote, which allows you to take any MIDI device and let it trigger pretty much anything in Cubase, including key commands and PLE commands. So if you come up here to the top right and click this little cog, you can choose to show the lower zone. I think there are other ways to get to this, but this is just how I do it. You will first need to come over here on the left and click this little cog icon, which will bring up the remote manager. Click add surface and that will create a new script. You name it whatever you want to, it doesn't really matter. The key is down here under input port. You want to select which input and output port that this is on. Now, a lot of this is already set up on my end. So if you have any questions on the MIDI remote manager, there are tons of amazing videos by Cubase and some of the other people that on how to set up a device in MIDI remote. So we close that, we've got our script created. And so if you click the pencil icon here on the left that will bring up this when i press the foot switch this button right here will automatically appear and then once it is connected on the right you'll see information about the many signals that it is receiving i've set mine up to be on cc80 because it doesn't affect anything else any instruments or like piano i'm using a complete control keyboard so i plugged the mini foot switch into it and was able to go into the complete control software and assign the foot switch to trigger cc80 there are other ways to do this there are different programs it really just depends on the equipment that you have and then i've set it to absolute and standard and zero to 127. So after that is set up, if you come over here to the button, you click it so it's highlighted blue and you right click it, it'll say pick for mini remote mapping. So you click that and then it brings up this mapping assistant. You could have more than one button in here depending on what you've done. But if you click right here, that will select the button that we're trying to edit. If you click this icon right here, it'll open up a browser. And this allows you to assign any of these things to this button. So in this, in our case, we're going to click key commands and we're going to scroll down until we see process project logical editor. I know that's a lot. So, okay, so these are all the commands that, and then we're looking for stop recording. Let's keep going. Okay, stop recording and add phase. We click that right there. And then we'll come over here and click apply mapping and so now mine was already set up of course but you would see now that that command is linked down here to this and then that's it you close it and your foot switch is linked you can click the cog again and close that okay so you're almost there you've created everything you just need to set up the punch in punch out system on the transport bar down here you will click this little lock icon to unlock the punch points which are right here punch in punch out if you don't see those click the little cog right there and then just click that 
punch points and that will show them. So what we need to do first is set the punch out point. And what we want to do is set it really far out of where we would stop recording. Oftentimes I get a really cool phrase or articulation or something after the recording is done. I don't know. It, it just happens sometimes. So I like to be able to capture more than I think I need. So I don't miss anything. So you place your cursor over here. You come to transport punch points and then set punch out point to project cursor position. And that will set that. So we do that. You can also assign that a key command, which I did and link that to Metagrid. So it's really easy to set up if I need to. The other trick with this is if you have a template and you work with that, you can go ahead and set this punch point out and save that in your template or as part of your template file. Then you don't ever have to set it again. So that's it on the punch points. Uh, when you begin recording, you would select where you want to. You press the macro that we created earlier and that will set the punch in point and you pick a track, press the foot switch, you're recording and that's all you have to do to actually make this work. Press the foot switch again and we can stop it. It's already added the fades. As you can see. Okay. So one more thing, which is newer. Again, I, I can't remember if it was 10 or 11. The key basis came up. The fade length. How do you set that? I've set mine really short on purpose. So how do you edit those? If you have a part and then you just drag over that right there, that will create the fade. You double click in this area right here and that brings up the fade editor. Notice this is for fade in, not fade out. So for fade in, you set up however you want the curve and you come down to length and you type in the length of the fade you want. You kind of have to kind of do a little back and forth to figure out what this exactly means as far as the length. But once that is done, you click as default and that will save that as the default fade and click apply. So every time when you add a fade with a key command, it will give you that fade length, the default one it will create. The other thing you need to do is do the same thing on this side, drag that over, double click in that area for the fade out editor, do the same thing, set the length right here, click as default and apply. And then so every time you press that key command, it's gonna add those default fade links right there. So you can set them really long if you want to, or super short. It's a really nice feature depending on your, your workflow. Cool. So I hope that helps everyone, all you amazing musicians out there.